In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get a dark and moody look to your photography using Lightroom. Let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is bump up the exposure. It's going to depend on the type of picture that you have. I'm going to bump this up to about 65 as of now. And then what we're going to do is also bump up the contrast to about 10. The next thing we're going to do is decrease the highlights. So we're going to go all the way down to about 66. And then we're going to skip over shadows, skip over blacks, and then focus on the whites and bump this down. So this is going to be negative 35. So that is what we have so far. Nice little base there. And then I'm going to also just increase the clarity these little things are going to really depend on you know how much you want your picture to be edited you know how much contrast you want you can always go back and toggle these and change them now we're going to go on over to vibrance saturation vibrance i'm going to decrease it to 25 and then saturation we're also going to decrease it because we just want to suck the life out of this picture. Look at this. Are you guys feeling uh, blue already? Or in this case, uh, negative 11 saturation and negative 25 vibrance? Nobody? Okay, let's just, let's keep going with this. <laughs> Who's not enjoying my analogies here? Leave a comment and let me know. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's go on over to the curves. Now, I drew these in my notebook. Hopefully, they're going to look the same. If not, then this whole tutorial is just going to be a mess. Uh, so let's start with the RGB first because I, get, I just don't even pay attention sometimes. So you want to make sure you pay attention to what channel you're on. So RGB is going to be the first one. And with this, there was a specific look in mind. I wanted to make sure that there weren't any um, really bright or dominating blacks or whites. Again, we're just trying to make this picture look like it's been in the dust in the attic for 20 years. So looks like we're on the right track here. So that is looking pretty good. And what I wanna do is going over to red. Now the red, I made very slight changes to. I'm gonna try to recreate that. You could make more intentional changes, but I want to keep it very subtle as of now. Then we're going to tackle the green. That is not what it's supposed to look like. Okay, we're kind of messing this up. Don't worry, guys. This is the troubleshooting that goes along with, you know, working in any program other than MS Paint. You got to troubleshoot. And I'm also thinking once I add the blue, then it'll come together. All right. So we're going to keep it like this for now. If it's still looking terrible, we're going to have to fix this one. And then the blue one is actually my favorite channel because I love the yellow and blue tones. And we're bringing this down. Okay, it's looking, yeah. I mean, I'm getting sad just looking at this. Wow, very moody. We're not done just yet though, guys. So almost there. All right. So that is how it looks right now. And then I'm skipping over all of um, the hue, saturation, and luminance and I'm going to the split toning. The highlights and the shadows are really going to define this picture. There's so many different ways that you can color this photo using these two options. And the one that I have, you know, that I practice doing, I'll show you guys. So it's like a very light green color. And then as far as the shadows go, let me, let's remember what I did here. We did 208. 
So that color is more on the blue side. A very, very light colors for both. And of course, it makes no difference unless you, you know, increase the saturation. So if you ever wonder like, why did the shadows not work? Why didn't the highlights work? You just pull the saturation up, you guys. Don't make sure it's not on zero because sometimes we do that. So that colored the picture quite a bit. And again, I'll show you guys, you bump up the saturation here. You bump up the saturation in the shadows. It changes things. You can also play with the balance. So now we're going to the calibration window and I'm gonna start by just decreasing the shadows tint to negative 100. And then I'm pretty much going to be just decreasing saturations and you know, fixing the hue on just a couple of them. So for the red primary, we're going to do negative 16. The hue on the green is going to be negative 26, negative 22. You know what, I'm not even gonna bother. Let's just do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna get it exactly. As far as the blue goes. So a little bit of everything. So your photo's going to look like this. All right, guys, I made a bit of a mistake. I just want to decrease the saturation here on the highlights. Got ahead of myself and wasn't paying attention. So that's going to be 10. And I'm going to just keep the shadows saturation at 18 for now. And one of the last steps, I usually like to toggle the temperature and tint of the photo at the very last moment so that I can kind of see how it's going to look. And this really does change up the whole picture. If you want it more cool toned, you can just bring that over to the blue side. If you want warmer tones. I mean, it's gonna look depressing either way. Just how, like, do you want it warm depressing or cold depressing, you know? Are we on a mountain, sad, or are we on the beach, sad? Just, I don't, you got it. that's your choice to make. So that is gonna look something like this. So if you don't want it as green, which I noticed that it is, you can go back to the green channel on your curves window and just tweak that a little bit, which I'm going to do right now. And also, if you bring down the bottom point here, you're going to fill in the black of your picture with you know, the channel color. So if you want it to be a lot less contrasted, just pull those points up So that is how it's turning out so far. I'm just going to do little tweaks right now and make sure that this is exactly how I want it. You know, it's hard to have a test image and then recreate that exact image with, you know, the curves layers because sometimes I don't get them 100% accurately. So I'm just trying to tweak it as best I can to show you guys exactly how I did that. And then RGB, I'm going back to that just to tweak a little bit. And I would recommend you also do this with your daily editing. If you are editing pictures and you come up with a nice color, I would just go back to it in a couple of hours and then just refine it. Because sometimes we look at things for too long and we kind of are okay with it, even though we probably could you know, refine it and uh, make the editing a little bit better. So that's how it's looking so far. And again, I would just go back, tweak the temperature and tints accordingly. Add a little bit more contrast. On the lens corrections window, I'm also going to add some vignetting. I'm just decreasing the amount and you can also play with where the vignetting starts, you know, the middle point of it. So I just brought that down a little bit. So this would be the final look that's before and that's after. If you wanted it to be a little bit more gloomy, you can always just decrease the exposure and also bring down the blacks as well. Just decrease that. If you wanted to add a little bit more grittiness to your picture, but 
it just depends on your photo and how moody you would want it to be. So this is the after and that is before. One last tip I would give you guys if you're doing something a little bit more moody is play with the highlights and shadows. If I were to simply toggle the highlights, you can see it kind of just changes the whole mood of the picture. So just by changing these two colors, the hues of the highlights and shadows, it changes up the mood of the whole photo. So play around with that. It's really fun. You can come up with different color combinations. So again, just kind of it's what you like and what kind of colors you want in your picture. So I'm just giving you guys some extra options. If you don't like the colors that I showed you here, it's super easy to toggle these and come up with something completely different and still have it look moody. I also have this preset available for purchase at my online store, so check it out. It has this preset plus a couple extras. So if you want that moody look to take with you and use on all your other pictures, again, it's available. I'm gonna have that link in the description. I really hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you guys think down below and I would love to thank you guys so much for watching.